Today I want to give you an update on a very promising initiative that is called Growing MKE and has the potential to change Milwaukee as a city as we know it today and jumpstart a wave of new development in Milwaukee and could really be a turning point and a major milestone in the history of Milwaukee. It's called Growing MKE. It comes out of the mayor's office who has made plans to grow the population of Milwaukee and has tasked the Department of City Development, the DCD, to uh, look into this and uh, look into especially the zoning rules to encourage new development. If you've been following my channel for a little while, then you know that I'm always talking about the chronic housing shortage that we have. We just don't have enough housing. We are not building enough. There is not enough new supply coming in the market and that is driving up home prices but it is also driving up rent prices. So it really becomes a cost burden for everybody who is living in the Milwaukee area. This is why I'm so excited about this initiative because it all starts with legislation. It all starts with zoning. And that's what I want to talk about today. So first of all, where is the initiative coming from? It is coming out of the issue that Milwaukee has been losing population for the last 50 years. So we peaked in the 1960s as a manufacturing base in the Midwest for the entire of uh, North America with 741,000 uh, people living in the city of Milwaukee. As you know, we have uh, about 19 other municipalities all the way around. So total is 1.6 million people living in the metro area. This is just the city of Milwaukee. And we went down from 741,000 people to 592. Um, so there is a huge decline in population. And that, of course, has implications because we're still maintaining an infrastructure, roads, bridges, water, sewer, snow plowing, police, everything else that a city needs to operate and function for a population that is much bigger than the population that we have today. And of course, uh, if we have fewer people paying taxes in Milwaukee, that means fewer people have to shoulder that cost burden. More people living in Milwaukee would spread out that cost burden over more people. So that would, of course, help the city to fund everything it needs to do from parks and recreation to you know everything else that I just mentioned. And it would also help the population. So that's basically the root cause for it. And um, zoning is the key to this because the way how a city looks, how it is developed, that is all dictated by zoning laws. And that is, has been very, very limiting for developers uh, who are trying to uh, bring more housing units into the city. So um, quick introduction to the topic. If you're not familiar with zoning law, we didn't always have zoning in Milwaukee or in other cities in the US. It really started in the 1920s until then. So in the 1800s, cities were just growing organically. You would just buy a piece of land and then build whatever you wanted. A single family home, a saloon, a beer brewery or a tannery or a factory, whatever it was, there was no uh, real legislative oversight. And this is where zoning law came in at the 1920s because people said, okay, we need areas for people to live and we need areas for factories um, that are stinky and we don't want to have that in the same area. This is where the zoning law originated. And before zoning law, we had a relatively wide variety of different housing types um, here in Milwaukee. And you still can see this in some parts uh, of the original, the older parts of town. It starts out, of course, with single family homes, but then also duplexes. You have triplexes, you have courtyard apartments, you have cottage courts, townhomes, uh, low rise residential developments, uh, live work. This is like mixed use where you have like your your bakery or your coffee shop at the corner. And then you got more in the downtown area, mid-rise office or residential over retail. And then of course the downtown high rises. So this is basically the whole variety of di different housing types that you can have. And then we introduced zoning law. And by doing so, we outlawed most of what is here in the middle and they actually call it the missing middle. So that that term missing middle comes in, you know, in every meeting and every Zoom call. Um, it is getting being brought up again as the core issue that we have, because when you look at Milwaukee, we really have the downtown area. And then if you look around, uh, it is really a sea of single family homes from horizon to horizon. So this is what a you know, a zoning uh, basically looks like without the missing middle. So we're totally lacking diversity. Um, it's really a lot of single family homes. I'm exaggerating this here a little bit, but visually this is what you see when you 
it is just single family homes from horizon to horizon. And ironically, people who are living there, they're they don't necessarily want that. So pretty much every first time home buyer, they and when I ask them what they're looking for, everybody literally starts by saying we want to be in a walkable neighborhood. Those are very desirable. People just want to get out of the house on Saturday morning and walk to a coffee shop. And we have a few of those spots. We have some some in Bayview. And then, of course, in the smaller municipalities like Wabatosa, uh, Whitefish Bay, Shorewood, uh, very, very desirable. And of course, that is driving up rents and home prices. And people really want uh, walkable single fa uh, walkable neighborhoods. But if you are surrounded just by single family homes, there is literally nothing you can walk to. So that initiative Growing Milwaukee has a number of goals. Um, and one of them is, of course, increasing the housing supply and the housing diversity. So this is really great news from uh, from my point of view, because we have a housing shortage. We need more development. We need more homes. We have more people than we have homes. We have more buyers than we have sellers. New development is the only answer to that. And it needs to be affordable. It needs to be smaller homes. It doesn't really help us if we're building six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar homes in the suburbs. We need them smaller and uh, more affordable. And of course, we need walkable neighborhoods. That's what everybody wants. And I was really happy uh, to read this in the uh, draft documents that have been published a few days ago. There's other goals. The total thing is like 70 pages long and you can look through it. There's a lot to it. A lot of preparation went into it. They did a lot of public outreach, a lot of meetings, a lot of hearings, engaged with many of the organizations in Milwaukee to solicitate all that input and consolidate it in a plan uh, that makes sense. I think they've done a really fantastic job and I've been following them and now the, um, a draft plan is on the table and I thought it's time to give you an update and tell you what's in the draft plan. So one of the most significant uh, changes that we're going to see is that residential zones are going to get more variety. If you look at the little map here, residential zones is everything that is uh, marked orange here that, that is currently just single family homes and you cannot really do much in terms of developing that because the only type of housing that you are legally allowed to build there is a single family home and we're going to see a lot more opportunities the first I'm really excited about is townhomes if you travel a little bit in the US I just came back from Washington DC Washington DC has a, a ton of townhomes uh, you can see this also in a lot of other cities, especially on the East Coast. Uh, townhomes are basically single family homes that are uh, touching on the exterior wall. So they offer the same privacy that you would expect from a single family home because your neighbor is not above or below you. Um, you, you, have, you, you own your land, you own your house. Uh, it is a single family home, but they are connected uh, on the wall. So you can, of course, get a lot more townhomes. I would say on average, probably three. Uh, at least maybe four on one single family lot. So that allows for uh, more density housing. Then we have detached houses, of course, and uh, we have ADUs, accessory dwelling units. So this is also a concept that is very common in the rest of the US, just not in Milwaukee. So an ADU could be a cottage house in your backyard, or it could be an in-law unit over uh, on top of the garage building that you have in your backyard. It could also be an internal uh, ADU that would be maybe in the basement or maybe in the attic. So you could have an entire apartment uh, fit into an existing home. And that, of course, would help a lot. Um, an attached ADU is also uh, another option. Cottage courts is another configuration where you have a number of small single family homes surrounding uh, a common courtyard area. Duplexes, of course, classic configuration. We have a lot of them in Milwaukee. I think 66,000 of the upper and lower configuration. And then, of course, also triplexes. Um, for zones that are already allowing uh, duplexes, they uh, the proposal says that in the future they should also allow fourplexes. So um, parking is another consideration in here. The plan is relatively comprehensive. It goes into all of these details. I'm just abbreviating that here, but just know that all has been considered and it's a really uh, very uh, complex plan. And in terms of multifamily, they're talking about removing barriers, currently multifamily zoning is really governed by mathematical formula. They're thinking about removing these barriers and that will really open it up, especially in the commercial corridors and in areas that are already zoned 
for multifamily and that is your classical hallmark of a walkable neighborhood where you might have a bakery you might have a restaurant uh, you might have some offices in that building and combined with living so these are neighborhoods where you don't necessarily depend on a car to get anywhere you can walk to different places that is something that is at the moment really rare to find in milwaukee so where is the project here's a little bit of an overview of the time plan uh, they have done a lot of outreach they have done literally hundreds of meetings and uh, zoom calls I, I try to keep up with it and participate and now we finally in spring of 2024 we have a draft plan um, which I just tried to give you a very, very high level overview so you know what's going on. If you're interested in that, then uh, take a look. I have the contact information here in just a second. Uh, but this draft plan is going to is currently out for feedback. So anybody can engage and say, hey, I like this. I'd like to see more of that. And then it's going to be put in front of the mayor and the, um, the uh, Common Council Committee. If they approve on it and they make it into city policy, then the uh, Department of City Development can actually work out a proposal for the zoning code in that spirit. And uh, these guys are making good progress. So if everything goes well, we are going uh, to see changes to the zoning code as early as end of this year or then into 2025, which in the, in the world of uh, zoning and legislation, that is actually a pretty ambitious timeline, but Milwaukee can really benefit from it. So I'm glad to see it. If you want to get more detailed information, I have the contact information here. Uh, just Google Growing Milwaukee. Uh, it is on the City of Milwaukee website. There's a lot of information there. I really encourage you to read up on this. I'm very excited about the plan because this could be a total game changer for Milwaukee in terms of development. You know, that means a lot of contractors, a lot of jobs are going to be created. Uh, the Milwaukee GDP would uh, do very well with that. Uh, so from an econo economic point of view, it would be really good for the city, but also from a housing point of view, we would get a lot more inventory. We would get more tax revenue, which would allow us to deal with the many potholes that we have and maintain the old infrastructure that we have and spread out the cost over more people instead of having fewer people having to pay more. So a lot of good reasons to, uh, to uh, look forward to this. I'm excited to seeing this coming together. Hopefully this was a good update for you and I'll see you at the next video.